guys we are on part i don't know i need to get my life together of relentless um <laughs> so on part 5.56 girl um mina jasmine larue has called tiara down in miami florida now backstory a little bit of backstory there is a hurricane on the way to um miami and so tiara is a little bit shaking up because she's used to the weather she's been back you know in miami for the last 15 years after you know things didn't go well with paul she ended up marrying and having a bunch of egg, bunch of kids girl so anyway mina is um she got the name from detective rodriguez rodriguez excuse me and she decided to call up tiara to get a little bit of background on paul because she has a feeling that paul is behind the accident of her husband Quentin who has unfortunately been in a medically induced coma now for a week and some change a week and a half or so okay so cut back to Tierra I mean a conversation Tierra was like on the phone and she got like five six kids girl she's like y'all hush up I'm on the phone now she's like now nah, I'm sorry can you tell me um what's your name again and so Mina clicked her voice and I'm so sorry. Um, I am Mina LaRue, Jasmine LaRue. And I'm calling you regarding Paul Winthrop because I have a feeling that he's behind some of the things that have been occurring with my husband Quentin. And that's when um, Tierra cut her off. She said, did you say Paul Winthrop? And she's like, yeah. You know, she's like, well, honey, I don't know how much time you have. But yes, I have plenty of information I can I can share on Paul. And this is Tierra. She said, y'all hush up. I can't hear. She said, girl, I'm so sorry. These kids are gonna drive me crazy we have a hurricane headed towards uh, miami and these kids are driving me crazy we're trying to board up the windows right now and that's when mina was like well do you need me to let you go it sounds like you know things are getting kind of dangerous there and tiara, tiara was like girl i've been through so many hurricane warnings this is nothing so tiara was like well where should i start off well back in the 80s i met paul and you know he was this big shot movie director and I was under the pressure that he was going to put me in one of his uh, movies. But he had all of these odd questions that made me feel a little uncomfortable. But at the time, I was young and stupid. And I'm pretty sure you're not going to make some of the same mistakes I was making. Girl, I wish we could say the same about Mina. <laughs> I was heard this backstory of how she met Paul while she's trying to hush her kids up to be quiet and all of a sudden mina can hear some sirens and she's like what is that she's like, oh my god i'm so sorry it's the um alarm is going off i guess the hurricane is on its way and that's when the audio keeps cutting in and out and mina's like hello hello to you so well i can you hear me look you just need to stay away from paul because he had this horrible horrible and the sound the audio is going in and out and mina's like hello are you there tiara are you there she's like yeah he had this horrible relationship with his mama mrs mary and tiara's like hello and all of a sudden the lines cut dead the hurricane is headed towards miami and their connection is lost and she's unable to con to continue her phone call with Tiara. So she was not able to get the inside tea, baby. So Tiara's feeling a little devastated that, you know, this is the first person she's been able to talk to who had this information about Paul. And unfortunately, the lines are disconnected. Yeah. So Tiara decided to wing it. She was going to use what she had to get what she needs. So she goes ahead and meets with and plans to meet with Paul at his house right okay now he's finally settling in into the house that he bought right so the cut to paul at home paul is trying to figure out the status of quentin that's when he sees below that he has a quentin i uh, sorry a message from mina and he's like you know what man it's okay he texts him at the other guy he's like it's okay i think i'm i should be able to find out what's going on with my brother so he goes ahead and accepts you know mina's invitation or you know she wants to come over and they decide to have lunch over and so they just decided to hang out over at his place um there's still some construction going on at the front of the house because again paul wanted to do some renovations because he's bougie as hell so they decide to go to the back of the house where it's a little bit you know a little bit nicer and cleaner so paul's like so how are you doing you know how's your husband doing and mina looks at him suspiciously suspiciously and she's like he's fine you know the doctors are not you know giving me much information and we have no idea i just don't understand what he was doing in that part of georgia when he told me he would be back you know a week before and paul looks he's like yeah i'm wondering who he you know who he had in contact with um she's like well 
I do know that, you know, I was, I was, uh, approached by a detective and he seems to think, think that Paul was ran off the road. That's when, excuse me, and he seems to think that Quentin was run off the road, was ran off the road. And that's when Paul looks, he's like, oh really? She's like, yeah. And I don't know who Quentin would have had any bad blood with. I don't, you know, I don't really don't know too much about his, um, business transactions, but from what I understand, he doesn't have any enemies. So I'm a little confused. And so Paul blows it off. He's like, well, maybe it's nothing, you know, maybe this detective doesn't know what he's talking about. And so, I mean, it's like, maybe I'm not sure. So they continued talking and that's when Paul was like, you know what, you seem a little stressed. You know, would you mind? Are you okay with having a bottle of wine? Now, I mean, and she had to get over to her big mama to pick up Zaire. She looked down at her, at her watch and that's when Paul notices her. He said, there you go looking at your watch again. He says, like, you don't have to, you don't feel pressured. If you don't want any wine, don't feel pressured to have any. And she's like, it's okay. I can have like one glass. One glass is fine. So she's like, you know what, Paul, I'm so sorry. You know, I... I'm just under a lot of stress and I really shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't have came over came over here. He said, no, it's okay. You know, don't apologize for that. He's like, you know what? I could feel the chemistry when we first met. Don't fight it, you know? And he grabs her hand. She's like, no, 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 no. I have to leave. I have to leave. So Mina now is feeling guilty. Y'all, somebody is walking past my house and she needs to stroll the hell on. I don't know if she's high or drunk. She needs... Oh, she got a husband or something. You need to get your wife. She needs to stroll the hell on. Anyway, y'all. And so, he, this is Paul, you know, pretend like Jesus changed this. So, this is Paul pouring and pouring her some more. He's like, well, here, this will make you feel better. Mina's like, no, I probably, he said, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. So, Mina goes ahead and has a second glass of wine. They start talking and she's crying, y'all. And he's rubbing her hand. Sooner or later, child, Paul and let Mina out of that back area to the other side of the house to one of the bedrooms. And Mina's like, I, I can't do this, Paul. I really can't. He's like, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Mina wants to, but she knows she shouldn't, okay? One, she's married. Two, her husband's in a damn coma. Get it. Mina, get your ass together. So, so Mina is feeling a little woozy because by this time, she's had three glasses of wine, right? And she's like, I just... And that's when she looks at him and she's like, who's Tiara? Paul looked like he had saw a ghost. He's like, what are you talking about? She's like, the detective said that he found some paperwork. And y'all, I'm talking like Tiara, I mean, like Mina, she's drunk. The detective said he found some paperwork and Tiara, a uh, Tiara came up in a Richard and Paul face changed. Like he was furious and he looked at Mina, he's like, they're nobody. They mean no nothing to me. You're the only one that means anything to me. That's when he leans in and then, but Mina pushes him off of her. And he's like, are you sure? She's, and she shakes her head. She says, no. <laughs> Mina gets a phone call, saved by the bell. She gets a phone call. It's from the hospital that Quentin is at, giving her an update on her husband. Mina slurs and says, she's okay, she's fine. Thank you for the update, hangs up the phone. She's tired, and that's when Paul suggests that she spends the night. And so Mina's like, yeah, I should probably contact. So she contacts her big mama, lies to her big mama. She rarely lies, and she feels bad lying to her big mama, letting her know that she's staying over the night of Courtney because she's had too many glasses of wine. And her big mama's like, yeah, that's okay, baby. You can spend the night there. So Mina goes ahead, gets undressed, and gets into bed, right? Y'all, this all sounds familiar, right? Because it does. Because it's Paul is the same old asshole, right? So Mina goes ahead and she slips into bed and she falls asleep. You know, she falls asleep. Next morning comes up. She can hear voices, you know, on the other side. She she goes down and she sees Paul um, in the living room. And there's another person there. And she looks closely and she sees a heavier gentleman. The guy turns around and says, oh, Paul, I didn't know you had guests staying over. And Mina, she's like, well, yeah, I'm sorry. I just was having a lot to drink. And he's like, oh, honey, believe you me. You don't have to explain yourself. Hi, how are you? My name is Richard. He reaches his hand to shake, you know, Mina's hand. She's like, oh, hi, Richard. My name is Mina. Then Mina thinks, she's like, oh my God, Richard. Is this the same Richard that the detective was questioning me about? All right, you guys, that's it for part.
I don't know. All right, so this is part too much to handle uh, part, I don't know, finale. <laughs> I'm gonna try to make it the finale. Of course, now my battery light is blinking. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. So Tiara is over at Paul's house. She had too much to drink, so she spent the night. When she goes downstairs, she sees Paul is talking to a mysterious, heavier set man who just so happened to be Georgia Richard. And of course, she knows by this time, this is the Richard, the same Richard name that Detective girl what is his name detective rodriguez had questioned her about and she didn't know but now paul has his fluffy friend over named richard so it's two and two together makes four right so richard's like oh paul i didn't know you had company over and so paul kind of rolls his eyes and that's when richard introduces himself herself whatever you want to call him today <laughs> um so, you know, uh, Mina says hi and she sits down. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry, Paul. She's like, as soon as I could get a little bit of coffee or something, my stomach hurts. I should have had not had that fourth glass of wine. Girl, I thought you said you had three, Mina. So she had three or four glasses of wine and now she's hungover. That's when Georgia twirls around us like, oh, honey, I have the thing just for that. Let me go ahead and make you some tea. Paul kind of looks over at Georgia and his eyes brows kind of raised when she said that. So Georgia strikes on off to go fix Mina some tea. And Mina turns around to Paul. She's like, I'm so sorry. I probably made a fool of myself last night. And Paul's like, what do you mean? She's like, well, here I am, a married woman highly intoxicated getting drunk i'm sleeping over your house how does that look and paul says it looks like you had a good time so mina kind of rolls her eyes and she's like oh, okay as soon as i you know have this tea you know i'll be out of your way so you know georgia comes back you know about 10 minutes later with a cup of hot piping tea girl literally and you know mina takes a sip of it she's like oh this is good she's like but what's that what's that taste what's that odd taste i i I'm getting and so that's when um, Richard said oh honey that's oil of uh, wormwood and it was like wormwood I was like yeah you know a little bit of oil of wormwood can help ease your stomach aches and so Mina's like mm, it's good so she goes ahead and finishes her cups cup of tea she says bye to Paul and she leaves okay cut to Paul and Georgia Richard whatever y'all it's same person y'all know who it is cut to Paul and Richard so that's when Richard was like oh Paul you sure do like him young don't you and so Paul looks at her he's like it's not what you think she's a married woman we were having a couple of glasses of wine and she spent the night and so Richard looks at him um and he's like come on Paul you know how long have we known each other I know you probably are setting this girl up to do something and so Paul kind of smiled at her. He's like, tell me what you got. Have you heard from Ty? And Richard was like, no, I haven't heard from him. I don't know what bug he has up his ass, but I haven't heard from Ty in weeks. Y'all, Ty is the, um, remember the thin man? The thin man from the contract? That was Ty. And apparently, Ty had cut off connection, all communication with um, Paul and Richard and they had all been friends for 20 plus years and they don't understand why all of a sudden Ty doesn't want to, you know, talk to them or whatever. So they're like, whatever. So they're just catching up and Paul was like, how much of that wormwood did you give her, Georgia? And so Georgia's like, just a little bit of sugar. She ain't, she'll be fine. It's just to help, you know, with her stomach aches, right? All right, you guys, sorry. I had to take a little break there and, but now I am ready. Mina gets a phone call from the um, ICU physician that her husband has awoken. He has um, doing really well and he's asking for her. So she goes down to the hospital and she arrives to see Quentin kind of rested up and the nurse says, you know, please, you know, go in and be quietly, but you can't stay long. So Mina shakes her head that she understood, okay? So she walks into the ER, excuse me, she walks into the hospital room to see um, Quentin there and she's rubbing his arm. Girl has the IV line in it. I gotta get y'all the little graphics on it. So she's touching his hand and she's like, Quentin, can you hear me, honey? Quentin, are you there? Um, he's like, Mina? And she's like, yes, baby, I'm here. Quentin, are you okay? He's like, Mina, um, Paul. He just starts whispering, Paul. Mina leans in, she's like, Paul? She's like, yes. The detective found your notes with Paul and Richard and, and uh, Tiara. 
and don't worry honey I'm gonna get I'm gonna get down to this I'm gonna figure out what's going on and that's when Quentin looks at her and he shakes his head no all of a sudden his heart rate starts escalating and the um what do you call it y'all the hospital equipment starts beeping a ER nurse runs and runs in and Mina's like Quentin are you okay the hospital nurse is like, ma'am, you need to move out the way. Ma'am, you need to move out the way. So they start to tend to Quentin to get his vital stable. Like, ma'am, could you please leave and let us work on him? He's in good hands. So Mina leaves the hospital room. And so after about 30 or 45 minutes, which feels like forever passes, the doctor comes in and says, well, Mrs. Um, LaRue, we're glad that we were able to bring Quentin out of the medical induced, but it like we've had a minor setback. So we're just going to ask that, you know, he's Still, he'll still have to remain here under close observation for a while and so Mina drops her head down she's like oh my god I can't believe this so y'all she drives home she explains to her grandmother what's been what's been happening okay let's cut over to Ty Ty y'all is the thin tall man from the contract storyline if those of you who remember that particular story he was sitting in on the interview with um tiara and he asked her some very disturbing questions in the in the contract you will have to go back and look at that story time to figure that out but they all had a falling out and of course they had to do with a bad business deal between ty um paul and richard but the also the inside tea is that ty had a thing for Miss Georgia, but she was never feeling him. She really had a thing for <laughs> y'all. I know these are messy queens. And so Ty was a little jealous of that relationship and how close they were. Um, but then again, also the business still went strange. So since they've all known each other for this, you know, for a long time, Ty had some inside information that he wanted to tell the authorities down in um LA. So Ty goes to the police department and he shows up and he's like, hi, I would like to um, provide you guys d details on a death that was possibly a homicide. So one of the detectives comes in and interviews Ty and he's like, well, I understand that apparently there's a death that was really a homicide. So Ty shakes his head. He goes into this outlandish story about how Georgia and Paul were in on poisoning, slowly poisoning his mother for years. And they were using something called oil of wormwood. Now, oil of wormwood is okay in small dosages, but if it's administered in high, high dosages, it can be very toxic and lead to kidney failure. So um, Ty suggests that they get a warrant or whatever they need to dig up his mother's body and look into it and you know run a tox toxic toxicity panel or whatever to figure out what the mother really died from right and so the detective's like well this is an interesting story you know using uh herb or you know to kill someone never heard of that before but we'll look into it and we'll let you know what happens right so that's what ty is working on okay now, mind you guys, when this happened, let me let me back up. When this happened, you know, with Ty contacting the authorities, this was also the same time when Quentin was doing his research. And he just so happened to have gotten in contact with Ty. And Ty did let Baby Q know, because Ty was aware who, who Quentin was. He did let Baby Q know that he believed that his adopted mom had been murdered by Richard and Paul. For y'all, this has gone on for years, and she slowly had been building building up um, what resistance but then they just started adding more and more of it to her meals um, when they were caring for her and so because she was a heavy drinker and she just you know for years they we really wasn't questioned you know why she really passed away from kidney failure okay so, so this I just wanted to catch y'all up on that that the storyline is still following the same path and Quentin had that insight knowledge that hey my adoptive mom was possibly murdered by Paul okay so that's the information he had and that's one of the reasons why Paul wanted Quentin hurt not kill you know maybe maybe a leg or arm too broken but he didn't want him really killed okay all right y'all so fast forward to you know a couple of weeks later paul feels like mina has gotten a little too close to learning the truth so he has called rich 
Y'all, my husband in the in the front growling and shit. Girl, I don't whatever. So he has called Richard now to help him to deal with Mina. Again, he just wants her a little sick for a couple of days and then you know miss georgia can whip up some type of tea with a little bit of this wormwood and then they could escape and go somewhere else to get you know mina off their tail right so that's why he questioned georgia how much of that did she put in her tea and so miss georgia said, oh, just a little bit honey and believe you me i've been doing this long enough to know how much and how little i need to give someone oh y'all mina gets home and she's like i just can't believe this she figured you know what i need to get to the bottom of this one way or another you know what if I'm going to risk it, I need to figure out what the hell happened between Paul and, you know, Quentin. If it means me coming out and letting him know that I basically know you uh, had something to do with my husband, so be it. So, Mina so. texts Paul and she's like, hey, is it okay if we can have dinner tonight? You know, um, even I would like to have dinner with Richard. I just want to share with you guys some um, information that the, de the detective shared with me. So of course Paul is going to say yes because he wants to know what the hell is going on, right? Simultaneously, he is asking, you know, Georgia, we need to give her some more of this tea. Just enough though so that she can pass out. Okay, so y'all, all this time, the detectives out in LA have gotten a warrant. They dig up the mother's um, body, you know, and sure enough, they found a high amount of this wormwood, oil of wormwood in her system. So they are sure with ties, um, testimony, <clears throat> and with the information that they um, found with the labs that they have enough <clears throat> to arrest um, Paul and Richard for murder of his mother. They call the cops there at um, Mina's hometown and they're like, you know, we're going to go ahead and make the drive. You know, we're going to catch a plane from L.A. down to Georgia. We should be there. Okay, so they are actually trying to arrive to arrest Richard and Paul. Okay, okay. so cut back to Mina. So she, again, she has text Paul to let him know, hey, I want to go, uh, go ahead and have dinner if you guys are free. Um, my grandma makes this mean pound cake. <laughs> I can bring it over. And I just really want to give y'all an update on the case with Quentin. And of course, Paul wants to hear this. And Miss Georgia's uh, petty ass wants to hear it too, right? So, so Mina arrives a little early. And Paul has hired a chef to cook for the evening. And they're having dinner, enjoying themselves. And so that's when Paul was like, well, I don't know if right now is a best time to share what's going on with your husband. And so Mina was a little startled by that, but she was ready. She was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I don't know if Paul told you, Richard, but my husband, unfortunately, um, was involved in an accident and that has landed him in a coma. Richard being flamboyant and stuff. Oh my God, honey, honey, no, I, Paul, you know, he didn't tell me sugar. Is he okay? Your ass already know. And Mina's like, yeah. The doctors think he's going to make a full recovery, but the detectives working on the case believe that he um, was possibly ran off the road. So they filled me in today that they have a couple of names um, on the list. And, so, and that's when Paul was like, well, who does he kind of think? And Mina looks at him and she's like, I think you kind of know who it is. And Paul looks a little anxious and she could see his eyes kind of glare. He's like, well, Mina, if you have something to say, go ahead and say it. Um, Mina was like, well, actually, Paul, your name came up and yours, Richard. And so Richard was like, mine? Oh, honey, I think he's talking about another Richard. <laughs> and so um, Mina said, Mina was like, no, I don't think so. This is too much of a coincidence that your name will come up. So, I mean, I don't understand what's going on. So I really came here tonight to get some answers on why my husband has been in a coma for the past week and a half and why he was looking into information on um, YouTube. And so that's when Paul looked at her. He said, well, I guess I should tell you now than never. So truth is, Mina, is that Quentin, or Baby Q, as we used to call him, and Richard kind of go, <laughs> Baby Q. And Mina looked at that like, Baby Q. So anyway, Paul was like, well, truth be told, Mina, Paul is my brother. And Mina's like, excuse me? 
And he's like, yes, Paul is my brother. And my mother ended up adopting him when he was only five years old. Um, we all lived together until Paul, we all lived together until Quentin was in his teens and he ran away. You know, honestly, it was probably for the best because he was hard to deal with. He was in and out of juvie and my mother could never tame him. Mother so. went in on a business deal with me a couple of years ago and we ended up losing a lot of money. So Mina is shocked at this. So Mina's like, she can't understand like why would Quentin go in with a shady business deal and owe these thugs money and she didn't know anything about it and so Paul explained it was years ago way before he met Mina so you know that was his past and so he probably didn't feel the need to share it with her but now they're looking for that money okay so Mina was like wow now this explains a lot so they you know, talking it out, trying to figure out a solution on this. And this one, Georgia was like, well, honey, you know, I made some more of that tea. If it's okay, would you like to have a cup or so? And Mina kind of looked at her. She's like, um, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a cup or so. So Mina has a cup of the tea, right? Right. So at this point, Richard had made a big pot of tea, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of calling it tea, girl. Spilling tea and you having tea. She made a big pop of this tea and put several drops of this warm oil. And this is really an oil, y'all. Oil of wormwood into the tea. And Mina is sipping on it. In more ways than one. So they're wrapping up lunch. Excuse me. So they're wrapping up dinner. And Mina's like, you know what? I'm so sorry if I ever, you know, second guessed you, Paul. I just, why didn't you tell me, you know, in, sooner? And I don't understand why Quentin never told me about you. Paul said, I don't know why my brother would hide me from you. I mean, I'll, my friends all know about him, you know, so I'm not sure why he wouldn't tell you about. And so Mabina was like, well, why wouldn't you tell me that? He's like, well, I didn't know who your husband was until the accident, the day of the accident. And by then, then, you know too much had happened and I wasn't sure I had gotten you know developed feelings for you and I just wasn't sure how you would take it and so Mina took that as okay like that sounded okay to her right so child they finished dinner and they head out into the living room and Mina's feeling a little woozy at this point because not only has she had a couple of glasses of wine, but she's also had some of this warm tail tea. Oh, what kind of warm tail? That's from Harry Potter. She's had some warm wood tea, right? <laughs> a little swirly head, a little woozy. And she's like, oh, I think I may have had too much of those wine. But really, like I said, y'all, it's that all of the warm wood mixed with the oil, with the, um, wine that's making her feel woozy and so she gets up she's seeing double double girl at this point and so quentin is like are you okay is there and so she's like yeah i just i just I, i'm feeling so that's when paul let out how much did you give her and mina's like what and, and <laughs> mina's like what give me what and Richard's like, shh, be quiet, Paul. She's not passed out yet. She's not passed out yet. And Mina's like, what? What did you give me? And so she gets up and she kind of stumbles down, you guys. And that's when Paul was like, come on, help me, help me get her up to the up to the um to the bedroom, one of the bedrooms. And so they get her, and so Mina's like, let go of me, let go of me. So she pushed Georgia's Georgia off of her. She tries to run. But she's getting and Richard um, fluffy ass turns right. We need to go ahead and grab her, Paul. So she's running through, running through, right? And Paul all of a sudden gets her, grabs her. Mina falls forward, and she's still a little dizzy, y'all. So he he grabs her, pulls her leg, and she's like, "Get off of me!" And she kicks him, kicks back, and kicks him in the chest. And Paul, child, fifty years old, ain't nothing like you thirty. I'm 30 and fine. So he clutches his chest and kind of falls toward her. Mina gets up, stumbles, the alcohol and all that. So <laughs> Rich is like, you let her get away. Get her now. So, you know, Paul all of a sudden grabs her and he has her. He's like, I'm so sorry about this, Mina. Come on, I'm so sorry. And so that's when Mina turns around and he's holding her. And she's like, why are you doing this? He's like, you don't understand. You don't understand. So he drags her back, you guys. He's holding her, drag her back putting her down and he's like you have to say you sit down sit down and we'll try to explain Bridget gets up and comes comes over and they're both looking at her now she's in this chair and Richard was like there's nothing to explain what are we gonna do 
Paul starts to rub his head. He's like, I don't know. I didn't expect for all this shit to happen. And that's when you say, yeah, you never, ex you never expect for it to happen. But when you see some young tail, you lose your mind. And Paul turns around, oh, shit, shut up, Georgia. So he's looking at her, and that's when Mino's like, no, I gotta get up. I gotta get up, Mino. And Georgia pushes that. She said, sit down, girl. Sit down, girl. Now you just sit your little narrow ass down. <laughs> And so Mina looks up at her and she's like, why are y'all doing this? Why? I don't understand. Like, why are you doing this? And that's when Richard looked at her and, like, and says, you're right, Paul. She reminds us so much of Tiara. And Mina looks and y'all, Mina's like swirling around. And she's like, Tiara? And Richard's like, yeah, Tiara, some little girl he was in love with 20 odd years ago. You remind us so much of, of her, right, Paul? And Paul's like, shut up, Georgia. I'm trying to figure out what to do next. So while they're trying to figure out what to do, child, they're whispering going back and forth. Mina is like, she's like, I got to figure out. I got to get out of here. I got to figure out a way to get out of here. So that's when Mina starts talking. She's like, you know, what do y'all want? You know, whatever you want, you know, whatever you need, what, what do y'all want? And so Richard was like, there's nothing you have that I want, honey. I mean, I don't know about Paul, but yeah, there's nothing that you can give us. So you hush up while we figure out what we can do. And so they're whispering and Mina was like, screw this. I have to get out. She gets up, y'all, again. And Richard is like, oh, this damn girl. And she tries to run from the door. <laughs> She drives to run for the door. She does make it to the door and she's fighting. She's fighting Richard and um, Paul is still on the other side and, she, and Richard turns around like, Paul, help me. Get up and help me. That's when Mina uses all, she uses all the strength she has to push Georgia down. So when she pushes her or him, um, Richard's, um, Richard falls back on to one of the desks desk and hurts himself. That's when Paul gets up and starts running and chasing after Mina. That's when Mina can hear sirens. She's like, is that sirens? So Mina gets up. She heads towards the front door. She can hear the sirens getting closer and closer. Um, and she can hear noise in the background, you know, cursing and Paul screaming at Georgia to get up. <laughs> Child, Georgia sprung, laid out on that desk from when um, Mina pushed, pushed her. Mina uh, is able to get out in the front yard, y'all. She she could see several cop cars coming up, and she has her hands up, waving, waving, waving for help. And one of the cops gets out, and he's like, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Where are they?" And she points inside of the house, and that's when she collapses on the ground. One of the detectives comes to to her aid, and they call an ambulance for Mina. They go in, and they see. Paul and Georgia is really in pain sitting there and clutching her chest and they end up handcuffing Paul and put him in one of the squad cars and calling an ambulance also for Georgia. All right, y'all cut to wrapping this up. So this is the finale. So Quentin does end up making a full recovery. He had, you know, had a little episode when Mina came because he was just thinking about what happened and he didn't want Mina to approach Paul for this reason because he knew that Paul and Richard were dangerous. Sure enough, they were able to find traces of this wormwood, oil of wormwood and um, the mother's body and they were both charged for her murder. Um, also, they found traces of <clears throat> wormwood in Mina's body and they were charged for attempt to murder. I don't know what you call it. Okay, attempt murder or whatever they call it. Whatever the, the charge is for Mina to. Richard ended up suffering a stroke. His ass still went to jail. But Richard ended up suffering a stroke and still went to jail serving 15 to 20 years, okay, in the penitentiary. Now... Since it was all Paul, since Paul was the mastermind, not only did Paul go down for the murder of his mother, and also attempted murder of Quentin, since he did hire someone to run Quentin off the road. The person that he hired testified against Paul for a lesser sentence. Both Quentin and Mina, me, again, Quentin makes a full recovery. Both Quentin and Mina testify at the trial, and um, Paul looks horrible. Being behind doors, baby, being in a locked-in cell has really done a number on Paul. He has aged horribly. It's only been a couple of years. It's only been two or three years since they went to trial. He has aged horribly. The great girl, you can't get just for men in, uh, in the penitentiary unless you turn in some tricks. Oh, I shouldn't say that, y'all. I'm so sorry. Y'all have to bleep that out. But you can't get no just for men like that. Um, So... 
child paul is grinning everywhere he looks horrible he's crying and so paul gets life okay he gets life with with no possibility of parole okay um mina and quentin like i said quentin makes a full recovery um he takes a couple of months off to be home with his wife and with zaire now he even though he knew that his brother wasn't shit he still did not give mina the entire story behind the brother so mina never knew that um the brother had that paul excuse me had had an incestual relationship with the mother y'all that is it that is for the finale i know this was a bit much but hey paul finally got what he deserved okay sitting in the jail cell and richard is too so they both queens behind you <laughs> oh that is it i'm not sure what the next story will be okay bye